everyone. Welcome to Behind the Nail Pros. I'm here with Viv Simmons, who once again flew all the way out from Australia to do a cover for us. Thank you so much for coming. Oh, it's always a pleasure. We have such a great time when Viv comes, and she always does something amazing and spectacular, and this time was really no different. Every time she comes, she has these beautiful, intricate, detailed, crazy nails, and she also gets so many comments on them when she's working and when she's wearing them at shows and for demonstrations that she suggested we do this designer nail for our cover. Let's begin with how you started. These nails were very long and you needed to apply a form, but it wasn't a regular size form. They were special forms designed for designer nails. However, you can use two forms um, attached to one another to give you that length. So you have the forms applied and then you used a color palette. It was blacks and grays. Blacks, grays, uh, semi-translucent blue and green. I used a little bit of white. Well, it was like a um, like a pearly white, um, and some glitters. And you used all that, and you sculpted out the nail. Yes, yeah, so I actually blended the colors together. So I would pick up maybe two or three different dips of um, of the different colors. So I may pick up a bit of black with a little bit of silver, a little bit of the the translucent green, and then place it on a nail and just sort of smooshed it around. Did you use a base with these? No, I just basically picked up all the colours and placed them straight onto the form and just sculpted straight onto the form with the colours that I was using. And down her nail onto her nail plate too. There wasn't like pink on the nail plate. No, I took it straight onto the nail plate, sometimes up to the, the cuticle area, um, just depending on each nail. And did you make sure you kept it really thin because you were going to have to cap it in acrylic? I kept it extremely thin, then I capped it with the clear so that when I built the design over the top it didn't look very thick and chunky. Since you kept the nail so thin you didn't have to do quite a lot of filing. No, there wasn't a great deal of filing. I just basically used a 150 grit and a, just for the shaping and a 180 grit over the top. Nothing stronger. Do you have to be extra careful around the free edge because it's so sharp? You could easily, I feel, like nick it off the uh, very tip. Of Absolutely, it. and you need to file down the nail so that the file doesn't actually catch. If you're filing back and forth, the file can catch onto the very tip of the nail and snap that off. So after you filed all the nails, then came the exciting part of creating the design. You started with the pinky mm -hmm. and created a design for that. And all the nails are a little bit different. How do you come up with the design for each one? I just basically see what looks good. Um, I work with the first nail and then I think about what kind of effect I want to go with for the second nail. And it just sort of flows. It's, um, it's not anything that I pre-design. Make it up as you go along. Yeah, and then, you know, you may add to it um, as you go along, or you may even get to the third nail and go back and want to add something, you know, to enhance it. But generally, it just, yeah, it's just a flow. So one of my favorite nails was where you had um, these flowers along the base of the nail. And they're so cool because they're sort of two-toned, and it makes them look like flowers on a wedding cake. How do you create them and how do you give them that two-tone effect? By picking up two different powders. So basically, when you're um, creating flowers like that and you want to get that two-tone effect, it's called double dipping. So you would place the brush in a monomer, pick up your first bead, and then pick up the second bead. And it's the way the bead is actually placed on the nail. So if you want the first color to come through, you need to angle the bead down so that the color leaves a rim around the edge of the bead. Um, it's also the angle of the brush. That's probably just as important if not the most important thing. Um, the way you angle your brush, the consistency of the powder um, and the bead, all of that basically you know comes into effect to get that really nice crisp clear precise sort of look. Do you want the bead to be sort of on the drier side? I imagine if it's really wet it's gonna start going running out of the place. can't work with it wet, no. It needs to be almost almost to the point where um, it's opaque Mm. The bead's opaque, so then when you actually pull it out or start moulding it out, um, it doesn't it doesn't form a bead again. It moves with you. And you mentioned the angle of your brush is really important. What angle do you keep your brush at when you're doing it? Depends on what part of the flower. So um, when you're working towards the the centre of the flower, the brush starts angling um, more in an upright position mm -hmm. and flattens out more towards the base of the flower. And then to give the leaves that the veins and the texture in them are you just using your brush or do you use a tool? I use a number six design brush um, and I angle it so 
if I want to get that sort of vein look, I angle it and use the side of the brush. Or else there is a tool, or there are plenty of tools that you can actually use to actually cut veins in. The other nail that I like so much had a rhinestone and then these teeny tiny beads around it. That work was would make me blind. How do you have the patience to do stuff like that? I don't have patience for anything else. <laughs> <laughs> So what kind of tips can you give our readers if they want to use something like this, a technique like this? Well that actually wasn't um, a rhinestone, that was the illusion of a rhinestone. All it was was some coloured powder, it was a translucent coloured powder, and I used a glitter and I mixed the two together and I created what looked like a rhinestone. Um, and then the beads around the centre were just small little silver beads and yeah, patience applying each and every one of them individually. You also use black acrylic to create some lines and added detail and dimension to the nails and you use black acrylic but I also noticed that you brought paint with you too. How come you decided to use the acrylic? I like the difference in the effect. Um, the tip of the nail was shiny black and then using the black acrylic to create the oh, vines you could say or the lines, vines, um, gave it a different effect so it was there was matte mixed in with the shine. But you could do it with paint if you wanted to as well. Oh absolutely and you can still cap it as well. After you filed the nails how did you get them to the high shine? I used a gel top coat that cures under a UV lamp just to give it that really nice high shine and it's a great surface to sculpt on as well. You could also buff it to a high shine. Yeah absolutely and I also used it to cap off the um, rhinestone effect that I used with the glitters, the glitter powder. Which is what made it so shiny. Mm. I know this was just a stopover on your way to Puerto Rico, but I'm so glad that you did stop and come by and see us and do this cover for us. We always have such a great time and you do such beautiful work. I think that it's a real treat for our readers to see the stuff that you can do. Oh, this is like the highlight of my year. I love coming out and doing this. It's just a great day, great experience. Thanks again so much. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me.